Hey, Remote Pilot 101, Jason here. And the topic and the buzzword has been remote ID. What on earth is remote ID? What does it mean to me? Is this the government spying on me? That's what everybody really wants to know and hear more about. And let me just break it to you in plain English. Remote ID, honestly, is like a digital license plate. It gives more data than a license plate, but you have a license plate on your car, and if somebody cuts you off in traffic, it's not like you can Google that person's license plate and find where they live and everything else. Like, that doesn't happen. You copy their license plate down, you give it to the proper authorities, and they can then figure things out and handle it from there. Remote ID works in a similar fashion. It's just a digital license plate. Remote ID is gonna allow authorities to see certain things about your drone operations, your control site, we'll get to that. And it's gonna have some requirements on our end as well. Now, this is all rolling out, by the way, in the next 18 to 30 months. They're giving us a big window. And if I know the federal government, it's gonna be closer to that 30 month time frame because there's a lot of things the manufacturers have to do. But remote ID is really broken into three different tracks. And the first is something called standard remote ID. Look at this slide I made here for you. This broadcasts remote ID messages directly from the unmanned aircraft via a radio frequency broadcast, likely Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. I love that they have that in parentheses there. It's likely gonna be Wi-Fi or Bluetooth because they don't even know yet. That's why I said 30 months. That's when I picture this is really going to happen. It'll be a little bit further out with that because they, they don't even know how the technology is going to work. It's the government proposing something, but the technology to do this doesn't even fully exist just yet. Let's continue reading here together. Um, and broadcast will be compatible with existing personal wireless devices. Second bullet point, standard remote ID messages include the unmanned aircraft ID. This will probably be your serial number, longitude, latitude, so your location, altitude and speed, latitude, longitude, and altitude of the control station. So where is the controller that's controlling this? Emergency status. And here's the big one, timestamps. It's gonna show history as well. So for some reason you bust a TFR, a temporary flight restriction, and the FAA comes to you and says, hey, you know, Bill, you busted this TFR. You say, no, I didn't. They're gonna be able to look at your historical data and say, you were here at you know, 6 p.m., you flew this exact path, I can see this. We already have this in manned aviation, by the way. It's now coming to unmanned aviation. They'll be able to see and track and have all of that data. So just know and understand that. Let's look at our third bullet point here. The remote ID message will be available to most personal wireless devices within range of the broadcast. However, correlating the serial number session ID um, with the registration database will be limited to the FAA and can be made available to authorized law enforcement and national security personnel upon request. So again, the FAA will have it, even law enforcement will have to request to gain that access. Now you say, okay, this is, uh, sounds good, Jason, whatever, that, whatever it may be. What if I have an older drone? Because right now that's talking about sending this out essentially on a new device. You know, when the, the Magic Phantom 5 or whatever they're talking about is gonna finally come out, it'll have remote ID. But I love my Inspire 2. I bought the thing for like $6,000 back in the day. I, I wanna keep my Inspire 2, it's a solid platform. What about old drones? Well, that's where this idea of a remote broadcast module, our second in the three types of remote ID comes into effect. So this broadcast module may actually end up being a separate device that's, or it could be a feature built into the aircraft. So entrepreneurs, listen up. We could be building remote ID modules for older drones. Second bullet point, enables the retrofit for existing UA uh, and must broadcast serial number must be entered in the registration record for the unmanned aircraft. Third bullet point is what we just read previously. The underlying bullet point here is where I wanna spend some time. The UA remotely identifying with a broadcast module must be operated within visual line of sight at all times. We didn't have that stipulation with standard remote ID, but as it stands right now, if you're using uh, say an aftermarket or something we're gonna fix or attach, this remote broadcast module, we're limited to operations within line of sight, which we have to do anyways, but what if I have a waiver for beyond visual line of sight? Or, I gotta tell it to you, beyond visual line of sight, similar to how we just got ops over people, ops over moving vehicles, ops at night, beyond visual line of sight is coming as well. 
your waiver, you have to waiver it for now from part 107, but what if I have a Beyond Visual Line of Sight waiver and I want to affix, use my Inspire 2 with a remote control module? See how those rules and regulations don't really line up together. So we'll have to clarify that here in the near future with that. Um, as you can see, finishing out, likely uh, bullet point five, uh, radio frequency, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and compatibility. Once again, the third type is considered flying in an FAA recognized identification area or a FRIA, I guess we'll pronounce that as. These are geographic areas recognized by the FAA where unmanned aircraft not equipped with remote ID are allowed to fly. Now this is weird. Organizations eligible to apply for these FRIAs include community-based organizations recognized by the administrator, primary and secondary education institutions, trade schools, colleges, universities, within line of sight, will accept applications in 18 months, yada yada. I don't want to apply or I don't want to comply with remote ID, let's say. I'm going to be limited to flying in these areas. What does that mean for my FPV community? What does that mean for my drone racing community? Right? How are we going to structure that and, and work this out? Well, we can work some of our remote control modules in there, but honestly, as, as someone who does some FPV flying, wants to get more into some racing, it's all about weight, it's all about speed, it's all about the balance of that weight and balance, and CG as well. I don't wanna be adding a bunch of things to my build here. So that plays into this here as well. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed, be watching for what does this mean for the FPV community as well? Can we expand these areas or, or that maybe they'll drop a weight requirement under this weight, doesn't need to comply with remote ID. All that will come out soon. I know the FAA is advertising this as a final ruling, but I can tell you it's not. It's going to change in the next 18 to 30 months as well, just based on the verbiage. They say things will likely be Bluetooth or Wi-Fi technology. They don't even know themselves just yet. And the drone manufacturers are scrambling to make this happen as well. The DJI did come out uh, recently and say, hey, we're not worried about this. We've been thinking about this. We've got solutions in mind. They're not sweating it. Um, and, and those of you who are entrepreneurial minded might be thinking, what remote broadcast modules could I be creating as well? Anyways, I wanna know your thoughts on remote ID as well, whether they be positive or negative. Let me know in the comment section below this video. I read each and every one of them with that. So have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see ya.